so back on the hill for a two day camp a 14 mile round trip pretty straightforward most of it a wee bit of moor at the end one thing I need to say is we're right in the middle of stag stalking season it runs from about 1st of July to 30th October although they do deer management all year round this is when it's the busiest you know, we just need to keep an eye out for that and if you've got dogs they don't need to be on a lead they need to be in control of them within about 2 metres of you Amber being a terrier, she'll be on and off the lead all day till we get through this estate into the forestry land. We'll catch us up somewhere a wee bit further on. And this is a wee bull terrier cross, it's been missing since 17th of June, we're now on 31st of August. We were actually up, up here that week, never seen it right enough, it was lost on Ben Eam. Nobody's seen it or knows about whereabouts. There's a number there, I'll repeat that in case it doesn't show up very good on camera. Just come through a wee flock of sheep. Amber straining at the lead. She probably just get trampled, but that tells you <laughs> they're not happy. We're going to move on. Folks, today we're on the chicken, salad, jalapeno coleslaw, tomato. Biscuits. We should already demolished. Well that's us coming out onto the moor now, still got a couple of hours walk. Yeah, first water intake there, another one a wee bit further down. Harnessing all the water as usual. I 
as so as on our chosen remote hill locking for the night. Five hours to do seven mile. Well worth it, but yeah, natural jetty, that's what I like about this wee locking. Nice flat cushioned bit for camp. <laughs> no, it's a tent that up. I would have found a bit more of it. Heavy midget attack on. Right, folks, inside the tent. Unfortunately, when I was out cooking and stuff there and feeding the dog, the midges have got in. Drive me crazy, so I've got my wee sipping tea light. Oh, yeah, you don't want to leave this on in your tent, obviously, depending on what kind of tent you've got. These are just plain tea lights. You can buy citronella tea lights, but the citronella scented. And unfortunately citronella scented don't cut it with the midges. You need pure citronella oil. It doesn't take much. Just be careful with it because it's quite flammable. Being an oil. But right away I can smell that. In five minutes that should smoke the midges out. It's actually quite a nice lemony smell. Five minutes to do its work. Yeah, that's the morning of day two, folks. Beautiful day it's to be today. Breakfast going on. Midges are out yet again. Sausage on a bun roll. There we have it, folks. One black pudding, spring onion square breakfast roll. Done. Just a quick shout out, folks, from my mate John Stevenson. John runs um, Scotland's Wild, which is uh, tours round about Scotland mainly in the Loch Lomond Trossachs area and they're small personal tours in between 4 and 10 people it's a few Volkswagen transporters it's about £50 an 8 hour tour around Loch Lomond the Trossachs a couple of hours walking thrown in 
really good value, all really good knowledgeable, usually ex-rangers or people with a great knowledge of the area. He also does other tours, whiskey tours and what have you now, he's been doing it for a good few years. I know he's had a wee bit of a tough time with the pandemic so look him up www.scotlandswild.com and I'll put a link down below. Cheers. Hey folks, just after 12, had these boots on since yesterday, well apart from last night when I was sleeping. Time to take a wee bit of remedial action with them, you need to look after your feet, there we get you here and we get you away. So I've got my foot kit, which comprises a tilt. A pair of lightweight neoprene for cutting about the shore. A fresh pair of ankle socks because of the weather. Some biodegradable soap. Some antifungal foot powder. Now, it's important you don't wash yourself with your feet or anything directly in the lockings. Don't want to contaminate anything, especially when using soap, other chemicals, even if it is biodegradable. So I'm going to fill this, which I use for bringing some gear up. Water's fine, but when you're finished, you don't want to put this back into the lock, you want to put it into the grass or further away from the lock. Those of a nervous disposition look away now. Just make you a bit more comfortable round about your campsite. Now you want to add the soap to the water, not the water to the soap, that way it doesn't froth up so much. Not so much a hassle with cold water, but as we warm. Just set that up and dispose of that further up behind the tent. It's pretty important, especially if you're hiking for a couple of days quite easy for fungal infections to form in a five minute job really just to wash and dry your feet it makes you feel better as well and the antifungal foot powder cheap goes a long way
that feels better already just to get out of the boots Don't forget your boots, don't leave your old damp socks in them, take them out, dry them off, get them washed when you get back, a wee spot of powder in there. Sure, you're good. A lot more comfortable. Looking after your skin. Jobs are good. the subject of water. It's really important that we don't contaminate any water. It's also important that the water doesn't contaminate us. It's a risk of E. coli, leptospirosis, Wells disease, Harjo, Jarda, maybe dysentery, Shingella, Salmonella. You don't want any of them. And as much as E. coli gets a bad press, that's usually just a 24 hour Problem. You just fast for 24 hours, rehydrate water, tea without milk, that kind of thing. There's some more dangerous stuff like leptospirosis from rats and harjo that comes from cattle to humans. And although the Scottish Mountain Council advised that this generally is safe to drink locking water and stream water, I always use a filter or boil, or chemical, or UV. UV is a hassle, takes time. Chemical, okay at a push, but in parts a bit of taste. Boiling, pretty good, probably one of the best. Takes time, uses gas or fuel, CO2, all that nonsense. Filter, I personally use the Sawyer filter. You can get other brands that are available. The Sawyer filter is good for, I think, 100,000 litres, which is more than you're going to need in your lifetime. And that will work from puddles, streams, anything, you name it. In Scotland, generally, the water is safe to drink, but don't take my word for it, I always filter. And, uh, the Sawyer filter does the job for me. It's not just about the safety aspect, it's about the weight. If you're on an 8, 10, 12, 15 mil hike, you need to carry 2, 3, 4 litres of water. If you've consulted your map and you know you're passing by streams, rivers, lochings, just take a half litre with you, or a litre, and then make your way to the first water course. Use your Sawyer refill your bottle. It even comes with a straw, you can drink direct from the, the rivers and streams. You can save two, three, four litres of weight on your pack depending how far you're going. That two, three, four litres of weight can make all the difference as far as an enjoyable walk and an uncomfortable walk. So the Sawyer in particular, I'm not affiliated there, but 25 to 30 quid. 
dearer ones at 30 odd pounds are camouflage generally, which I've never understood for hikers camouflage gear. The only green item that I've got, unless it's only available in green, is my tent. Provides a wee bit of stealth, a wee bit of hiding, a wee bit of cover. Everything else I try and get in orange, bright colours. The Sawyer camouflage version is about 30 quid. And the Sawyer orange version is about 26 quid. I've never lost it yet, touch wood. Yeah. So there you have it. Get yourself a water filler. Weighs less than 100 grams. If you're hiking in Scotland or other areas where there's lots of water. It was 12.21, 22 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. A quick pan of where we're at again. Amber's just chilling. Super folks. It's going to get packed up and get down the road. This is when you need to be a bit careful. I do use a map and compass if I'm going somewhere I've never been before. So I've been to all these hill lockings numerous times. And that's still no excuse for no map and compass if you get a right pea super. But you need three out of four of these. You need prior knowledge in any order. You need prior knowledge, a map and compass, a smartphone, a GPS device. So the three that I use are prior knowledge. My smartphone, it's not reliable, you don't get a signal. You should be able to get emergency calls, not always. My soon to Lambert Peak 3 Expedition watch is really reliable. You get for under 100 quid now. And I mark a few waypoints on the way up, even if it's a good day. So I can find my way back. Only caught two fish last night. Both returned as usual. There's quite a lot of fish moving. Don't know if you can hear them in the background. Amber's had enough. She wants back to the comfort of the house. So we're going to get packed up and get moving. Well, that's us, folks. Sight left as we found it, as per usual. And we're going to make our way up through that mist. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This particular mirror's studied with these lesser walkings, mud pools, just be careful if you step in any of them, you can go into, 
your neck and beyond. Not a good situation, freezing, really difficult to get out of. I've been up to my knees before and even that was no fun.